Hello and welcome back to The Aquarium Shed. My name is Owen and this week I'm going to be talking to you about DIY CO2 kits. Uh, now a few weeks ago I did a 10 top tips in 90 seconds video and one of my top tips was indeed DIY CO2 and a few people commented that they would like to see a bit of a, a tutorial video on how I use those DIY CO2 kits successfully. Now the sort of kit I'm talking about are the ones that look a bit like this. They are readily available on um, eBay and Amazon for around about 15 to 20 pounds. They consist of two bottle lids essentially that are um, put together with um, a piece of piping between the two, a valve regulator on one and an output valve on the other and essentially you put um, a solution of citric acid into bottle A and a solution of bicarbonate of soda into bottle B and you squeeze the solution from bottle A into bottle B it creates a reaction which creates CO2 and once the bottles are both pressurized uh, the pressure causes a siphon effect between the two bottles which means that as the CO2 is given off by bottle B and goes out of the output into your tank um, bottle A will then siphon more citric acid into bottle B to continue the reaction and as long as the valve regulator sits in the green zone you have enough pressure for that siphon to continue until all the citric acid and all the bicarb of soda is depleted and you have um, successfully used up all the CO2 into your tank. Um, but there are a few uh, problems with this setup. Not not problems, but just like slight difficulties, I suppose. Uh, intricacies that make it a little bit um, hard to use. Um, but nonetheless, when you do get it right, they work really, really well and they are a lot cheaper. Now, when I say a lot cheaper, I really mean a lot cheaper. I buy, a bulk buy, citric acid and bicarb of soda. There's about five kilos in both of those at the moment. A five kilo bag on eBay of citric acid cost me around five pounds and um, the same again for bicarb of soda. Bicarb of soda is normally slightly cheaper but normally around about the five pound mark. For every time you fill up these bottles you need 200 grams of each so there is uh, enough in these containers to fill up and uh, do this for um, five times. Um, so it's roughly a pound, one, that's one pound in UK money of each of these into one uh, bottle um, so for about a four to five week supply of gas it's costing you two pounds now compared to a 95 gram cylinder of gas that is really really cheap um, 95 gram cylinder of gas uh, around about one uh, bubble every three seconds probably last you the similar sort of time four to five weeks and that's going to set you back in the UK around about 15 to 20 pounds so the cost of this kit um, and obviously by spending that money on this kit and then only having to spend two pound a time every other time this basically pays for itself after two or three months um, so how do I utilize it and how do I make it work for me now well I'll start with what the problems are so the problems that a lot of people will notice with this kit sometimes is that if you do not get a proper seal on the bottles then the reaction will just continue and continue and continue without pressurizing and you use up your ingredients incredibly fast as a result now you can tell that your system is not pressurized properly primarily because the bottles are squidgy like they are right now so the the reaction is completely over in the system and it's ready to be refilled as a result the bottles don't have any uh, pressure in them whatsoever. When this system is pressurized properly, these bottles are really, really tight and you could hardly do any of that with them. Um, so you know that they're not pressurized if the plastic is not, you know, like it would be if you bought a new bottle of pop in the supermarket. Also, if you can hear a lot of the reaction hissing, that's a sign that actually the gas is escaping. You shouldn't really hear too much of the reaction. You do hear a slight hiss, from the reaction but you shouldn't hear anything leaking out um, and that's I'd say the number one um, reason why people get frustrated with these because you know they're reliant on um, fairly kind of um, limited and sort of probably not that well done seals on these bottle caps and you're also reliant on you know the quality of the bottle that you buy and if there's any cracks or um, leaks in the bottle then you know you're gonna have to get yourself a new bottle um, but you know once they are sealed properly then um, they work great. So for that instance, which I'd say is the number one reason why these bottles um, fail, um, I always just apply a little bit of Vaseline to the seal underneath. 
um, every time I refill this. And that means that um, I can create a nice tight seal every single time and I don't have any problems with leaking. Um, the other thing that people get confused by is the instructions on this in terms of how to get it up to pressure. Now it says quite clearly in the instructions that um, you fill it up with 200 grams on each side, 600 mils in bottle A, 200 mils of water in bottle B, you squeeze bottle A into bottle B and then once the reaction um, takes place you're then supposed to um, do a series of off and on with the valve in order to continue to get that siphon to work and get it up to pressure. And then once it's in the green zone, you can then use it as per normal. But I find that that doesn't really work to get out the pressure quickly. Actually, what is best is just to squeeze all the citric acid that you can into the bottle, allow the reaction to take place, and just be patient and wait. Don't mess about with the output valve, just make sure the output valve is completely off. Um, so I'm going to show you what I mean right now by getting down to refilling this system. So, as you can see, all of the liquid, bar a little bit, is now in bottle um, B, and that is because bottle B started with very little um, solution and bicarb, and all of the citric acid has now depleted itself from bottle A into bottle B. So we now need to get rid of both these solutions and start again. Top tip as well, I also find it useful to have two slightly different bottles so I can remember which one is which when I'm doing this. So I always think of bottle B as being the one with the indent and bottle A being the one without the indent. It's just a way that I remember as I'm starting to fill these up. Um, so as I was saying, first top tip is to uh, get some Vaseline. I was more organized and remembered where I left it. I'll be right back. One of the problems of having too many tanks is you can never find things. Vaseline was upstairs underneath the other tank. Okay, so like I was saying, one of the main problems with um, these systems is that you can get um, some real issues with getting a proper seal on these bottle lids. And then that means that the reaction just continues and doesn't stop. Um, and regulate itself and build up any pressure and all the gas just escapes. So I always apply a little bit of Vaseline to the lids um, and the tops of the bottles just to build up a decent seal and kind of keep the seals that are inside this bottle cap in good order. I do the same thing with all of my seals on um, my external filters as well. So I do that before I do anything else just to make sure that everything once we start the reaction will be nice and tight because it's important to kind of get a seal as quickly as possible because as soon as these start to combine uh, you'll be starting to lose um, ingredients unless you have a sealed container. Okay so the next thing is to fill up both of these containers with 200 grams of citric acid and 200 grams of sodium bicarbonate. So this is where takeaway containers come in very handy, both the small ones for scooping and the large ones for um, putting stuff in. Great excuse to have takeaway as well. And the citric acid will go in nice and easy because the citric acid is quite granular, almost like um, sugar. Um, the bicarb is a little more tricky because it's quite powdery like flour. So that's the bicarb, sorry, the citric acid. Now the bicarb. Like I say, this one is a lot more um, powdery, like a flour almost. So you want to have something like a um, spoon ready and just do a bit at a time. Make sure that it's going down the siphon. It's actually going down fairly well today, but it normally will start to clump up eventually. 
Only a little bit today, actually, not too bad. But yeah, you just want something just to jab the last of it down. So, we now have 200 grams of citric acid in the one bottle, 200 grams of bicarb in the other, and then we need a total of 800 mils of water, and 200 of that goes into the bicarb solution. So, the citric acid is not too bad, it normally uh, dissolves fairly well. And it doesn't matter too much because it will gradually dissolve. But the um, bicarb, this way you don't want to get too much into the other one at this point because it will start to react. The bicarb doesn't, uh, it doesn't uh, dissolve quite as well. And you do need to give it a good kind of shake just to get it to a nice milky solution. And that should be about fine. Now, top tip, I'd recommend you finding a container of a similar size to two bottles like this. Um, it just makes life a lot easier when you are using this system. They both go in quite well and they, can, you know, they keep together um, and it just means that there's no issues with any kind of pull on the pipes and all that kind of stuff. So, um, bottle A is a citric acid and bottle A is the one that the, uh, va the, the bottle lid with the regulator valve goes in. And this has a um, little round, I don't know what you call it, but it's got a little bit of metal inside so that it's magnetic. And um, this kind of goes in and is able to be grabbed from outside of the plastic bottle with a magnet and pulled out of the solution if needs be. That's if the pressure ever got too high. You could pull this out of the solution so that no more citric acid is able to go into the bicarb and react. So it's just a little bit of a safety mechanism should your pressure get too high. I've never had that happen, um, but um, it's there nonetheless. And there is a little magnet. I don't, oh, there it is. A little magnet that I kind of just keep around the uh, fish room somewhere. And if you need to, so say this is dangling inside the bottle, you can grab it from the side and you can move it up and down in the bottle like that. Um, so this one goes in this side and like I say make sure there's plenty of Vaseline on all sides of the um, seal and just make sure that you get a really nice tight seal between the bottle lid and the bottle. And once you're happy with that one do the same on the other side and this one has a shorter pipe that just dangles above the bicarb solution. And again, just make sure that the Vaseline is all over the seal so that you get a nice tight seal. And you can kind of tell that they're nicely sealed when you can't push any air out of them. Okay, so that's, uh, that's how you kind of set it up in terms of um, all the stuff that you need. Once you have them set up like that, make sure that this output valve is completely off. And then you need to begin the reaction. So to do that, you take bottle A, the one with the citric acid, and you squeeze it like so until you start to get a reaction. And you can tell when this is working because all of a sudden these bottles both go really really tight as if um, as if they are brand new bottles of pressurized solution and you essentially just need to wait like i said the um, instructions that come with these setups say that there's a little bit you can do where you turn the valve on and off on and off to create the the siphon um, and um, get the reaction to start quicker. I just find that there's no real sort of certain way of making that work without like losing quite a lot of gas. This to me is the best way. Just wait. And it can take up to two hours. But waiting um, and um, waiting for the pressure to build and when it doesn't seem like there's much more reaction happening in bottle B just giving it a really good squeeze which does get quite difficult after a while because the pressure does really build. But just keeping doing that every now and then and leaving it for a couple of hours and you will build pressure on the gauge. So we'll come back when the pressure 
is in the green zone between 1 and 2 bar. Okay, so that was just a quick time lapse of this system getting up to pressure. As you've seen, the um, pressure is now built up in the um, valve regulator to just shy of 1.5 bar, so right in the middle of the green zone, which is exactly where we wanted to be. Um, you can see that there is still quite a bit of citric acid left inside this bottle. Um, probably about 100 mils of it or so has gone into the um, sodium bicarbonate solution so far. And you're seeing uh, that I, every now and then, just went in and gave it a good squeeze over the course of about an hour and a half, that was, that time lapse. Um, just to get a little bit more citric acid into the other side to continue the reaction. As a result, we have a nice pressurized system. No need to open this valve or do anything that it says in the instructions around kind of opening and closing the valve and kind of creating the pressure that way. Just never found that was useful way of doing it. Just wait, be patient, and give the citric acid bottle a really, really good squeeze, which admittedly does get quite hard as the pressure builds, but um, it works nonetheless. And as you can see, the siphon is doing its thing putting a drip or two of citric acid down to the other side every now and then as the pressure builds and creates the siphon. Uh, so that's it, I'll um, attach this now to uh, the aquarium with um, proper tubing and I put a bubble counter onto that tubing so that I can measure the flow. Um, so I will um, leave you with uh, shots of me setting that up, getting it ready and uh, you know, making this uh, lovely new scape look even more awesome by giving it a lovely fresh supply of CO2. I hope that was a useful uh, drill down of how to use these systems. Pretty, pretty sort of simple really. I think in summary the two key things to, to be aware of. Be patient with building the pressure and make sure that those bottle caps are really well sealed so that you don't lose any CO2 and ultimately waste all of your ingredients. So I'll leave you with some nice shots of the tank, me setting it up with the CO2, and I shall see you next week. Thanks for watching.